You don't have a separate battery that's heavy. It's all integrated into the system. So I can pick this up, carry it around, set it down. Of course, my exhaust is off right now. You have a little exhaust tube coming off, but it's just easy to move around, right? Setting it up on a campsite. Maybe you're doing some ice fishing. So I'm gonna show you a little bit how to set these things up today. It's not just as simple as running 18 volt power to this heater, you actually have to convert that down to 12 volts. So if you're gonna build this system yourself, you're gonna need about three or four things here. You're gonna need these adapters that the Milwaukee batteries can slide into. You're gonna want two of these so that you can wire them in parallel, and that will allow you to swap batteries out without turning off the heater, right? I could pull one battery out, put in a new one, and leave that heater running, and then I can take that other one out and, and put in the new one. The heater doesn't turn on and off every time you swap these batteries out. And the next thing you're gonna need is that step down converter and then you'll need the low voltage cutoff. One thing that you can't see on the outside here is you're gonna need a relay. And that relay is inside of here turning power on and off to the fuel pump. So this low voltage cutoff does not turn off power to the entire heater. All this does is cut off the power to the fuel pump. Let's say you wire this into the heater itself. So the output power from this low voltage cutoff just runs back to the terminals here and your batteries drain down to a certain level. Well, that's just gonna turn off power to this heater entirely. That's a negative because these heaters have to go through a cool down cycle. And if they don't go through that cool down cycle, it heats up a lot inside of this heater and puts a lot of heat on this uh, control board right on the top. It can also put out like white smoke out of your output, right? And, and just some unburnt diesel might come out of your output tube here. Okay, so just opening up the casing on this here and uh, I'll show you how I have this fuel pump wired inside. I've got this torn apart a little bit here and as you're drilling this stuff in on the back, you wanna make sure that you're using screws that don't go too far in. You don't wanna start drilling into this casing right here where the heater is housed. This is our fuel pump right here. So it's it looks a little bit complicated how I have this wired up, but it's, it's really pretty simple here. Okay, so we're gonna explain how this works a little bit here. I drew up this diagram to help show you how the power is being run and how the fuel pump with the relay and the low voltage cutoff fits into the system as well. So if we take that out of the picture for now and we just think about this top side here, we just think about, all right, how are we getting 12 volt power to this heater? Well, we have 18 volts coming out of these M18 batteries wired into parallel here. So we have these wire nuts that are represented by these circles right here. And that's sort of the hub where all of that 18 volt power comes together. And um, it goes from there then into the step down converter. So there's two wires that run into this converter right here. And that's our 18 volt. And so then it steps it down, it runs through this system and it comes out of here as 12 volt power, right? So that are those are the yellow and the black wires that come out of that converter and run to the terminals on the back of the machine there, right? So they just hook up to the positive and the negative right there. Okay, so that's the basics of it. But then, uh, what is the low voltage cutoff? How is that wired in? So that actually goes straight in to these batteries once again. So that is actually also wired straight in to the wire nuts here. So there's a positive and a negative and it's that 18 volt power uh, that comes out of these batteries, right? And so uh, that has an inlet and an outlet on that low voltage cutoff. And you can see that represented here by these two terminals. So uh, this one right here is your in and that's your out power. So this wire runs, the in, the in power here runs directly into those wire nuts. And then the output power, right here, that's gonna run to our relay inside of this casing, and that's gonna control that fuel pump to turn on and off. So the way this relay works then is our output voltage, which is 18 volts in this case, turns on this relay when there's power being supplied to it, right? And when that power is being supplied, all it does is complete this circuit right here that comes off of the fuel pump. And all this is is actually one wire that I've split into two. Okay, so 
what this is right here, I've got three batteries that are at different charge levels. Uh, right here, this first one is at full charge and we can see the voltage on that. So at full charge, it's at about 20.4, 20.5 volts. I saw it at a minute ago. This next one here that has two bars of charge is at 18.4 volts. And this battery here is flashing red, it's dead, and it says 17 0.2 volts. So we need to set our low voltage cutoff accordingly. Okay, so right now this heater has been running for a little while. We only have it running on this one battery. If I hit the top tester here, there's only one bar left. Right now it's reading 17.5 or 17.6 volts. Uh, right now we also have the low voltage cutoff here set to 17.4. Okay. So, when this voltage drops down to 17.4, it's gonna cut the fuel pump circuit, and we should see an error get thrown on that screen, and then it'll run through its cooldown cycle. And it will kill the fuel pump. There it goes. So it just barely snapped down. You saw that light turn off. And there's our error, E7, for the fuel pump. But, the whole heater still has power, and it's running through its cooldown cycle right now. So let's say these batteries get low and it's time to swap out these batteries for fresh ones. And you wanna do that before the heater actually turns off, right? Uh, if I have a fully charged battery here and these ones are low, like I said before, you can swap these out one at a time and leave this thing running, but you wanna do it somewhat quickly, right? If I pull this one out and stick this fresh one in there, I now have a fully charged battery wired in parallel with a battery that's very low. So you're almost supercharging this battery here. You're putting a lot of amperage back into this one and it's not really safe for this battery just because you're, you're almost jump starting it. Think of like hooking jumper cables between two batteries and just leaving it there for a long time. It's, it's just a rapid charge. It's a lot of amperage. It puts a lot of stress on that battery. So, you know, be sure to pull this one off and throw your other fresh one in right away as well. So the way that these heaters are built to be run initially is with a standard 12 volt battery like this, right? What if you want to run a 12 volt battery like this again? The way that this is set up, there's some beauty in this. If you leave these two wires hooked up to your terminals from your 18 volt system, it will actually backfeed this power into your low voltage cutoff again so that your fuel pump can still run. Make sure that you just leave these wired up, right? So you got your 18 volt system hooked up here. You have your 12 volt system, you know, stacked right on top of that thing. As I wire that up, now you can see it's reading 12.3 volts, right? So the only thing you have to do now is readjust your low voltage cutoff to a lower point than, you know, what would be intended for drainage for a 12 volt battery, right? So I can uh, decrease that from 17.4 volts all the way down to, I don't know, let's just say 11 volts or something like that. Um, we can throw a chart up in there that shows the levels of charge, like what percentage the battery is at versus the voltage that it reads on a 12 volt battery. And that'll tell you where you wanna be. If you discharge these 12 volt batteries below 50% frequently, it's gonna decrease the life of the battery. So if you really are trying to maximize battery longevity, set it to about 50% discharge.